Holy. We're going. We're on. We're on. We've got it. Okay. Okay. Good evening, um, Mia and Councillors, and to the senior leadership team, and to Alan, who's here from the news, and to anyone else that's listening um, online. Welcome to this evening's Risk and Audit Committee meeting. Um, so we will get underway uh, with our first item, which is um, any apologies. Oh. Uh, councillor, uh, not councillor, Iwi Rep, Ned Tafu. Ned Tafu, are you moving that way, Mr. Any others? Uh, seconded by Councillor Howard, all in favour? I right, carried unanimously, thank you. Um, second item is members' interest. Do any members have any interest to declare on tonight's agenda? No, no, nothing to disclose or declare. I'll move that way. So the second of that, Councillor Nadon, all in favour? Aye. Any against? No, carried unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number three is the confirmation of the minutes from the 19th of April. Um, I'm going to take those as read. Does someone like to move that they are a true and correct record? Move to Councillor Webb, seconded. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor Basher. Any discussion? All in favour? Aye. Any opposed? No, very unanimously. Thank you. Go down. Just bear with me for a moment. We will move on to agenda item number four, which is page 22, councillors. Um, this is the action point list. And on the list, we have two action points, which are due for an updated. So the two action points for information are the Puna Kaiki lease and the projects and partnership reports, um, both due for an update on the 14th of June. Um, so, if we're satisfied with that, that we'll get a further update on the 14th of June. Any discussion before I put the motion? Council says. There should be another action plan. I just found it. Page 19 of the minutes was a breakdown of the costing of um, the um, community's income, community facilities income from the meeting. And it's in the minutes under uh, page 19. We'll just go back to the next. It'll be on the action list. I was busy finding it. Let's just have a look. Have we got the exact reading to? Towards the bottom of the page on page 19. Oh, Mr. Marshall to provide Councillor Sampson with a leasehold budget breakdown of, for Orawadi Cemetery and Community Facilities. On the action list. Is it on the action list? Yeah. Okay, we'll add that in. Thank you. Um, for is that to come back to a meeting? Is that what you're wanting? Yeah, I, I want the information and the fact that it was said it was going to be on the action list and it's not there. Do that for June. Do you want yeah, that's just okay. Yeah. Councillor Nadal. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, the Kunkaiki lease one, we're needing to look at proposals and also rate payout costs in a further update yeah. to be provided at the April meeting. But the um, in the red there, it's only talking about the Edgewood system. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Douglas, would you like to add to that? So, I suppose it's making clear that the first, the type of Edgewood system is not there. Second thing was where you go all included. Issues on lease and so forth as it stood today. And the third issue, which maybe we haven't been is we agreed that we would add to the long term plan to bring all our review of how we manage all the campgrounds under one report as part of our go forward. So maybe we could just limit that because I think that's the key issue, which will then bring in that rate part contribution discussion as part of that debate. So, so we'll add that to the action points. Add that to action points, but it will be a, a long term plan um, item which will be agreed. December 2023. I think we decided it was a broader discussion around four councillors um, around all campgrounds at that point. So we'll add that in though. Um, so with those two, with that addition and amendment, I'll put the motion that the Risk and Audit Committee receive an action point report for information. Uh, moved Councillor Weston, seconded Councillor Nadon. All in favour? 
in routines. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to agenda item number five, which is the risk and audit work plan. And um, we will become quite familiar with this, which details out um, reports which we have in tonight's um, agenda, specifically around Dredge and Harbour and the follow up on the EY matters uh, that were raised and then our standard reporting and then what we will receive in June. So, um, any discussion? No discussion. I'll put the motion that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the Risk and Audit Plan for information. Move. Deputy Mayor Basha seconded. Councillor Webb, all in favour? Aye. Any against? Councillor Reid? Yes, Councillor Reedy. Um, motion's carried. So we'll move on now to agenda item number six, which is the dredge port and dredge um, operations report for May. And so just to reiterate that this has been closed to count since the 1st of July 2021, which was part of the long-term plan at that stage. Um, this has given us quite a breakdown here of um, what's occurred prior to that as well with regard to both, both accounts. And Douglas, would, is there anything further you'd, you'd like to add? Yeah, Madam Chair, there was a, an item carried in the Westport News last night, which uh, I'd like to apologise for perhaps an inconvenience on. Um, but there was a note in there on page 20, not 31, which says, we are the process of the sale of Arbor, but Bob, our yeah, credited um, uh, chairperson has emailed you an item I sent out. What, what happens is when you start when you write a call to make a list of notes you want to check up and follow up, that was one I had in there. I've actually finished, because you'll see in the financial, I've identified the bob gap. Money coming in, I should have removed that note. Um, so I apologise, we probably created somewhere it fell on the truth. Didn't need to. Um, so that's resolved, there's no issue there. From a accounting perspective, uh, closed accounts, normally you would create, you would, you would create a reserve. So one of the things we need to do is to work out um, the dredge and the harbour going into an account, we actually have to bring that sale proceeds into the close account because that currently is what it's called capital general fund. So it might all sound a wee bit confusing, but this summary brings everything together as to where we are. It becomes an actual reporting. If you imagine it's no different to how we do our water accounts and our waste water accounts and all being close accounts. The, um, the balance of the items are there. We'll just, just work through. Uh, and we'll call back to you in, in due course. Issues like do we charge for credit interest? We clearly do on the loan that was uplifted. Um, there is a, one question if I may, I'll just have to go to, if you go to page 31, uh, 23, which is that financial number there, and I'll just point to one, we'll just talk to one of the items that are there. So I've just identified there in yellow. Um, that's just purely just so we can see that our our core position that's forecast total for the closed account is that 2.75 million. Now that's you know, probably not the, it's not unexpected because of the, the deficits we're running, but the key is how does that ultimately get repaid? And further in the, in the report, I've made that note about how the leasing company, the mineral sands operation, will resolve that deficit. That's the objective of this closed account. Second one is the dredge, so you've got the green number there. So we've got that $1 million um, deficit position. We're, by June, we will be about a third of the way through what's called tranche to network. So we will have approximately two and a half million still to earn during the period of July 23 through to about March 2024. Plus we'll have a campaign in Nelson, from that who would up their operating costs. And with that, you know, hopefully a good line of no issues with any of the dredge activities, like you know, engines, pipes, all that type of thing, we should be in balance by um, March 2024. Now, why is that an important date? Well, that's the point when we have to have sat down and figured out what is the relationship we need with Western Middle Sands going forward for the dredging needs? What is the situation we need with 
balance for the efficient point is we're going to work with the near every year. And then ultimately, is the council sitting as an owner of the dredge? Is it up actually something we're going to look after? So, yeah, there's quite a bit of work to do if the council is part of the next long term plan and understanding those activities. So, that's the objective there. And then the final of that report. There's one more thing I've covered in. Um, so there is a, there's one question we've gone back to a former um, finance manager and just asked a question because you can see way back in that first financial year, we obviously had to buy a uh, land and a couple of things to get ourselves to that million dollars of court assets and then they went and borrowed 1.34 million. It seems odd that we borrowed an extra $300,000. So we've gone and asked um, that finance manager and he couldn't shed any light for us either, which is, is sort of like and maybe we were looking to run fund deficits for a loan, which would be really unusual. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not probably the end of the world, but I just want to explain that it is something a question mark we just have to look at. So obviously we've got some interest in council all repayments ultimately, which we flow through this account on that loan. Plus, we need to address the issue of are we going to charge this operating account to keep up interest. Currently, we don't charge debit interest on our closing accounts when they're in debit. Equally, we don't get credit interest. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that as a strategy. It doesn't really matter what strategy is, as long as we're consistent. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's much more I can add. Another item obviously made the uh, paper, which is, is good, because part of these risk and audits is to identify the risks we see of these activities, and that's the current situation of not having a full boat. Um, it would be very easy for people to be critical of the council selling the bond of Gower, um, but reality is they made the right call in their time to move the assets. Now, of course, looking at the operational gear, we need to address that matter. So that is something we'll need to consider. And finally, we're just walking through the privilege process at the moment. We'll see us out advertising next week, looking for a new uh, harbour master. We've got a little bit of interest in formally, which is good. And I hope we'll make an appointment with someone uh, by the end of June on that matter as well. So we chance to have on those activities. Yep, thank you for the update, Douglas. Uh, are there any questions of Douglas? Um, Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before my life as an accountant, my approval was as well. I've never heard of a closed account except when the account's actually closed, like it is account or whatever. So I went past that because it was a short time. But uh, it was really ring things, or whatever you want to call it, but closed account. Now, uh, 3.2 on page uh, 28, 2.2. Uh, last paragraph it should be noted the exemption also allows those covered to bring the cafeteria in and out of Nelson Hall. My understanding is uh, from the regulations is that the harbour master will allow the harbour master for Nelson Hall or our We can't, oh, oh, um, I don't know where that, where that comment or how it originated because it's, as far as I know from, from the mobile brief, uh, it's not actually correct. Can we have a look at that? Yeah, yeah, it's not actually correct. Can we? I'll see you the exemptions that have been issued, so you can see that they come, they come through Maritime New Zealand um, as well, but I've seen those exemptions. I'll see you do one too, you so you can see yeah, it. So it's all about all board. I'd like to just ask that closed account. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a closed account or um, what we'd often call them target rate accounts, the, the key is that the money and the expenses are staying in that one account. That's the key principle. So you're right, it's unique to local government. But if you use a lot of targeted rating, that's why they're closed. But I hear you in terms of what it means in terms of a deal, but it is used some, but we would normally call it a, you know, a target rate account. That's much more of a, a methodology. Okay, and one other question for me, and that is um, uh, 3.3, 3.3, um, the harbour the harbor structures. Um, what we've got on here is that um, uh, about driving um, driving down Palmerston Street. I think that's the uh, one there. Using this land and, um, also avoids WMS having to drive through along Palmer Street, Palmerston Street with the rate and traffic issues. Um, most of the big trucks don't like uh, Johnson's and use it at the moment. Uh, semi trailers loaded with West Sand, Tallies also uh, semi trailers most of the time. They drive down Russell Street. And um, with um, and they turn into the street at Bright Street and into the courtyard. Uh, 
for Johnson Brothers, they had a high street, as you know, there's a gate there, there's an entrance, and there's an exit. So I'm not sure why there's a comment there about Armstrong Street because they don't drive around there. Secondly, uh, as far as um, the uh, as far as the Kiwi Rail plan is concerned, uh, uh, that, from what I understand, if I take this photographs, uh, cannot be used. But, you know, I've watched the trucks that are sitting outside Tallinn's waiting. Uh, they go up the ramp, they get out, and they come back down the ramp. I'm just not sure where that comment regarding uh, the between the silo and the um, uh, British shed where that comes from. Because of, of, is it currently... Oh, now I'm not after elaboration. What I'm saying is I'm bringing it up there. Uh, because I know we're, we're stuck in time. Yep. So I'm, I'm, I'm just raising those matters because they don't, they don't make sense. What? We will discuss it again for a uh, well, if you quickly yeah. wish to so the, make a comment yeah, around so it. It is a very confusing and tenure arrangement under the wolf and the land down there. It was quite confusing. <clears throat> You'll be getting one of the one of the things the council did back in the July 2021 was doing the original lease in the which was with some minimum sands. So we need another lease. Uh, we'll be finalised probably next six to eight weeks. That will come to you. You'll see much more clearly the challenges there. But I can tell you right now, Kiwi Rail own the land of what some of our walks sit on. We need a lease. Then we need a sub-lease of Western Mineral Sands. And then we can choose it. We also need a licence for factories to allow them to have a Western Mineral Sands to raise up the shed. So it is all in the end. But it is confusing quite quickly. Right. Okay, um, Mr. Mayor. Just really quickly, I think the comment to Palmer Street refers to the trucks having to cross it. So, if they, what this report speaks to is an internal road within the port, so it'll eliminate any crossing of trucks in and around Russell or Palmerston Street. They'll come in the same way the wholesome trucks used to do and find your way right along the port within the port grounds, if you like. Okay, that's great. Uh, we, 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 I don't know that it's really much the actual report, um, but yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for the clarification. So um, any other discussion in this particular report? Um, my only friend, Douglas, says you, there's a few matters which you've highlighted on page 31 still to come back to council can, because they'll go on an action point list. Can we have a date that you estimate that you'll bring those back? Uh, let's make it July 2023. It's part of closing, mm -hmm. uh, our, closing up this account. As it, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll look at your report. <coughs> on the okay, thank you. Any further discussion on this report? No, so I'll um, put the motion that the, fine, uh, that the risk and audit committee receive this, the report for information. May the move, please. Uh, Councillor Grafton, second. Councillor Fallot, all in favour? Aye. Uh, any against? Oh, carried unanimously. Thank you for that report, Douglas. Now we're going to move along to agenda item number seven. Um, now, this is a follow up uh, report from the Ernst and Young audit for um, their recommendations. And also, we've got, uh, and we discussed this at length at the last meet, uh, meeting, um, and the way in which we would report these uh, recommendations. And so, we've, we've got that now, and with the management's response. Um, and so, there is a motion, uh, uh, sorry, a recommendation in front of us. Um, and a couple of options is that we support the comments that are provided by staff or that we propose some other um, recommendation. So you would have had a chance to read through all those. And I thank, the, thank um, Douglas and, his, and the senior leadership team for their uh, management responses, which are quite detailed and, and certainly give us a way forward there. Some have already been actioned, which is um, it provides us some assurance around those. So I'll open it up for discussion before I put the motion. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Chair. Uh, item number two, uh, subcommittee bank accounts and reconciliations. Yes. Uh, my understanding is it's a uh, by BBC, which is subcommittees. And there's also potentially uh, the subcommittees also have their own little bank account and they have coach sales and things like that. They put the money into their little bank account. I don't think it can be the same. 
Am I correct to say that? Correct. And therefore, the comment there about the subcommittee bank accounts comes to, uh, uh, for me, it captures the, the uh, subcommittee itself. We have their own little uh, case stand um, bank account. So can we just have that? That's the one, that's the one uh, just, just clarifying the fact that it's the uh, bank account that's operated by BDC. Um, <clears throat> Chair, so just so we're clear, you'll find most subcommittees have not, I hear what you're saying about a cake account, but actually some of them run, um, you know, they're all their, like the Mokanui runs all their campground fees through and all their expenses yeah. there. So they are quite, they are quite significant. They're not what you call a cake, a cake stand account or whatever. So they are quite significant. Um, some expenses come through the council's own district or, or a council issue that you call it. These uh, subcommittees also have uh, some GST obligations that they manage well on, on our behalf too. So those processes are all, all, all fair or fine. What we are talking about here though <coughs> is improving a couple of things. Getting the bank reconciliation process easier for the committees and we set up a very standard sort of um, uh, income and balance type of thing. One of the committees I understand <coughs> uses the zero accounting software, which you can link to your bank account and do your GST returns on very successfully. We're looking to run that out for the balance as well, all to help the chairperson uh, manage those processes or chairperson pressure of each committee, but also give us as the council finance team the ability to look over things and just get some confidence as well. So we're just trying to tidy up some of those controls, but actually, more importantly, make life for those committees a little bit easier as well. So that's the type of thing we're just talking about there. If we will provide a fulsome report as to what we actually do for each committee. So let's work through that at the moment, because there's a wee thing with licensing and um, the GST issue, I'm just having another look at that because I'm not sure we've got more to do. So yeah, it's, 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 I've got, I've got no issues with it, but inherently there's always a risk when you have multiple bank accounts being managed by, by others. So we just have to make sure our control is good as well. Okay, thank you. So it doesn't leave it hanging. So you're right, 60,000. But remember, these subcommittees are actually the council. So normally you would expect their GST transactions to be ran through the council's GST situation. But what I'm advised is that the council many years ago went higher, they got some exemptions to the committees individually. So that's something I'm just, we're just pulling out the file to have a look at. Because it was a little bit unusual from my perspective, but I've got big advice on that that is the case. So we'll talk on that too. because. How you describe it is what I would expect, but the rest of the ability to do it differently, which is what we're doing here. Okay, right. no, any other discussion? Oh, thanks for hey, on. Yeah, um, just on those accounts, uh, are these accounts council accounts, even though they're run by the committees, or are the committees the owner of the accounts in the fund? And she said the committees are the council of courts. We delegate them certain things to do. So Everything they do in terms of income or expenditure or bank accounts is the council. But we manage them this way, which is you know totally fine. We just need to support them as well as we could. And there's a few things picked up by the auditors, which we could concur we would improve the controls, but actually more importantly, as I said before, help them with their activities. So any further discussion. Okay, um, I'm just going to slightly amend the recommendation and um, it, and as I put it, is that the Risk and Audit Committee received the follow-up report relating to the Ernst and Young Management report for the year ended 30th of June 2022 as at the 9th of May 23. And I want to add and support um, the management responses because we've been given that as option one. I'm going to put that because I'm adding that um, piece in. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Nadon, all in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously, thank you. 
and thank you again to the team for, for the work that's gone into that. All right, now we've got a, um, agenda item number eight, which is a, a, another uh, quite meaty report, which is the quarterly report to the 31st of, to, of March. And um, this has been done in a slightly different way, which I think adds value to it in that it, we've been provided with quite a um, detailed amount of commentary around this. So thank you to, um, just go back to Neil and the team for putting that together, because I think it helps um, with understanding. And um, I did note looking at the KPIs, what, um, overall they've been met, which is a good result in, from the um, point of view of assurance that um, business as usual is on track. So is there anything further you'd like to add to this, Douglas, or before I put it out for discussion? So I'm going to open it up for a discussion. It is, I think, the way in which the report's written that makes it very um, clear. I think they've, you know, preempted any, any um, perhaps any questions. So any, oh, Councillor Reedy. Yeah, I agree, I a few years ago, I approved something and I was told oh, it's a year ready to do this, just as a year in. So, basically, the balance sheet we're looking at now doesn't necessarily reflect the state of affairs because there, are, so there is activity going on right now that won't be uh, recognised in the, these accounts until the year in just no, I think Neil's made a couple of comments here yeah. around derivatives, for example, that are year-end um, adjustments. So I think if you read the commentary that goes with it, it clearly points out those matters which um, come up at the end. So um, thank you for that report. Um, any other discussion? Okay, so... Um, okay, yep, so... Um, Councillor Reedy has moved that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the quarterly report for the nine months end of 31st of March for information. The seconder, seconder Mr. Mayor, all in favour? Same page. With me, I'm just trying to find the next part of the agenda. Okay, agenda item number nine, which is on for those that are still finding it, page 55. Maybe I'm the only one that took a while to find it. Okay, we've got the capital receipts and expenditure report to the 31st of March. And um, once again, I just want to say it's a comprehensive report around capital receipts and expenditure. Um, so I think that what's been identified in this report is that there are no variances to the budgets which require approval from council. However, we've received it for information and also noted that 82% um, of capital expenditure will be completed at year end. So that's at the 30th of June and the balance carried over. But of course, council will approve carryovers at that time. And I think just reflecting on that, it should be noted that council's um, forecast to deliver capital works program in this year um, totals 140% of what was actually budgeted and I think that's a, a reflection on the amount of external funding that's come into council um, and the amount, um, number of additional projects that have had to be managed by our team so um, you know, I think that's well done to the all those teams involved because that's a, been a huge body of additional work that, that has come to, into council in the last um uh, well, for the last nine months, especially because that's what we're focusing on here. So, um, Douglas, do you have anything to add to this particular report? <clears throat> Madam Chair, page 61, there's an item there on my Mungara water upgrade. I've got a sort of longer commentary in there. What, um, what we've staff taken on board is that you know, Council had sort of a interesting discussion about know, getting all funding and the fact that we weren't able to provide some funding for Wai and there was a, quite a long sort of discussion about what do we do there. That, that made us go away and look quite hard at our the council resolutions and one of the staffs put together a, and this will come to you um, by the end of the show, but I just want to assure you we've done quite a bit of work on where we got to with Waimangaro Wood. I know there's been a discussion today with certain parties on alternative options that might work or, or may not work. We're also doing significantly more work, as you know, on Westport Water. So 
these reports are only part of it. We are looking quite deep as to try and understand you know, exactly what options we have with funding. Um, so we are taking obviously very seriously as we expect, just trying to get an understanding of where we would be. And then <clears throat> equally we're watching with interest what happens over the next few months with um, the three orders argument with the different political interests because they are all different. But um, we as the council have to keep going and preparing activity statements, which is one of the reasons for our long-term plan we're doing this back work at the moment. And just finally, um, you know, we, we have each week, we have a, uh, Mr Williams and myself, meet with senior finance and senior engineers and go through the project the force just to make sure we're on the work. There's nothing sliding around. So, you know, we're regularly identifying other things we need to look at in terms of cash flow forecasts and how our reports are coming together. So a lot of the investment this council has made in things like electronic purchase orders, approaching accounting, and how that all links together, I, I'd like to think is paying off some really good dividends. So, you know, we, we will be looking to sort of uh, enhance and modify these particular capital reports in the coming months and just try and give you a slightly, just try and enhance your experience and give you as much information as well. So, thank you. Yep, thank you, Douglas. Um, so I'm going to open this particular report up for discussion. Do I have any questions? Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, three, three for me, please. Uh, page 58, 4.3. Uh, four three last paragraph. All the budgets uh, the projects have included provision for external assistance and support from qualified project management uh, managers. What's defined as the qualified project manager, please? For me, it's someone who's uh, been to the university or done the courses through the institutes and what have you. So, are we just talking to someone who comes in with the name, the title of project manager, or what? Please. So there'd be a combination of um, engineers, quantum surveyors, um, would be the odd accountant, not so many of those clips. Um, and there are project management qualifications people can do to do that. So each person we're using has definitely got experience. They're not, you know, they're not um, war off the block, you know. And the key thing is that the leadership of our project management team is someone who's got significant experience in the civil and structural engineering and understands how to put together a team and get the best out of it. So yeah, we definitely do have a problem about figures deliberately. And I think that's also reflected in when we come now um, soon to the projects and partnership <coughs> reporting and you know the project managers around those particular um, which are all capital projects and those managers are, um, have done a fine job for us throughout that, that whole process. I think it's pretty clear with the nose, Councillor Reedy, the, the um, quality of, of those managers. Okay, uh, two more yes. uh, first one is um, better off funding, bottom of the page 60, uh, better, better off an IAE capital expenditure. Uh, now, this started smoke testing back in uh, November, December last year. And I would have thought we would pay for this if it was completed about February this year. I would have thought we would pay all those by now. And we were told that initially we had 400,000, uh, 300,000 spent, but 100,000 left over, which has since been reprioritized. But we're only showing 104,000 here, better off, and IAF expenditure. So, cost to date for smoke testing and risk for civil defense equipment and uh, something else. So I would have thought by the end of March we would have had some calls coming in or uh, actual accounts paid. I don't have that detail. I've had to make a note in the form. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, we can't answer. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy with that then. And uh, the last question is, uh, is a, lot of, uh, a lot of items on here, uh, capital items that should be already discussed with very previously. Uh, I believe the balance sheet's overstated. And you will have an opportunity at some stage to meet with the auditors. Uh, I'm sure you will be doing more. But uh, just as an example, the car park we sell at the airport, uh, that's our name. Once you've sealed it, once you've sealed a uh, car park to get to, it's already, unless you're making major alterations to the car park, you just have a basic reseal our name. It's in the books, but anyway, we'll discuss that with the orders. Yes, and I think we've discussed that at length now, and that will be something that is um, looked at 
I'll looked talk, over I'll at the end of I'll the financial year. Yeah, really yeah. thank so you. It's, it's, I can yeah. it's definitely appreciated. And, and, and the IS403. Uh, I'll leave that for you to have a discussion right. around that. I'm, I'm ready to. Uh, You're going to put the motion, Councillor Levy? Is that right? Um, that the Risk and Audit Committee received the capital receipts and expenditure report to the 31st of March. 2023 for information. Councillor Levy, seconded. Councillor O'Keefe, all in favour? Aye. Are we all? Oh, are you? So, sorry, Councillor Nalon. I got a little bit excited there. Um, <laughs> sorry, we won't vote yet, but we'll keep the motion on the table. So, Councillor Nalon. So, we're getting to the end of the capital expenditures for the year. And I heard you mentioned before that there will be some counter labels. I presume that we won't know those until next month. And, and there's people out there that are wondering, you know, are these projects going to be completed in this financial year? So I'm just wondering how we get that information about those projects that are likely to be carried over before the wait for the next year. Okay, just a few other notes. Okay. I mean, the, the, the reality of the best stuff I can give you, I can say on is that. We're obviously be reporting on during the count somewhere in that August. But I think because of the interest showing in our recovery program, we said we could do something like we've been doing quite weirdly up until recent times of what recovery response work has been done. So it wouldn't be too um, difficult to pull somebody out and say, these are the projects that are actually finished inside this year. Here are some current forms which will be undertaken in the next months. By the way, the charts of work in terms of particularly with Karen and Luff and those road work programs that Wakatahi approved about two months ago, they'll be undertaken in 23 24, which will explain their annual budget. So that we can um, look to bring something I'd like to get that as close to that July like August period, though, so we get as accurate as we can. And, and also the, the BAU projects as well, not just the flood recovery. Yeah. yeah. So the community interest in some of those. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what would be useful, because we won't be able to get every capital report and some sort of publish reports. So if you've got something particular, why don't you drop me an email so I can say, yep, cool, this is where that one's at. That just might be easier to get a specific flow of information. Thank you. Right, okay. Councillor Reedy. Yep. Thank you very much. Just a quick thing to support it. Uh, what I was just saying, just to you that November that we uh, have the report on carryovers for uh, for capital items. It all comes through about then, so uh, it might be for me it's too late, but uh, it does, that's when it does have to pay them about my limit. Uh, that is carryovers. And Joe, yeah, my, my experience is more carryovers, and I think it's too late as well. I would like to pay the convenience for the limit because we have to do where it's part of it, as you would know, winding up and working out what's work in progress, what's capital supply, by sort of July August. So, I know it's been tradition, but it's something I'd certainly change, just, just change a wee bit, just to get that out a little bit quicker. It all comes down, and one of the things we're really crunching at the moment is we're working hard understanding your annual for any long-term plan commitments, because there's a hell of a lot of work to do over the next four or five months across the organisation. So we've got work programs that are about to pop out showing that, and I don't want to, it's stuff I can do in July, August, and quite a thing, instead of doing it again, but we'll see what we're doing. That's great, thank you. So that's that's um I'll be reassuring the councils to know that you'll be aiming to get that um, carryover report out. It's good that it's reassuring yeah. I've been doing now, won't it? <laughs> well you've said it now. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. So thank you for that discussion. Now we still have on the table the resolution which was moved by Councillor Reedy and seconded by Councillor O'Keefe, who's now left. Oh, so yeah, so we'll have to replace that. Okay. Um sorry, Councillor O'Keefe did request that she leave the meeting early and that, that's um I did the proof that. So seconded by Councillor Nalon. All in favour? Aye. Any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to agenda item 10. And that is on page 62, and that's the investment and borrowings report. Um, there was just one thing I did note that the 
but it is mentioned in the report, and you probably all noticed that the current account was overdrawn for one day, but it was on one day only, and it was timing of accredited payment, which was a little bit unusual because usually they, that isn't the case, but it was explained fully in the report. So that was from Neil, which was good to receive. So this report is um, fairly standard. Anything to add to this, Douglas? Um, you just read really, we, we've had we've got a mix of work program at the moment. So uh, both the project managers and the finance team led by Lynn and Neil are uh, working really hard getting, getting really clear on cash flows um, at the moment. That's a big thing. I mean, it's a big thing for an organisation any, any time, but we've got quite a few number of cash flows that are coming, which is not unexpected, but just means, you know, we just need to keep our language and discussion going. So, yeah, it's a pain that day. Um, I mean, yeah, we've, we've even, um, like people like Nima who fund us, we're also working hard with them to understand that payment's coming through so that we, we really minimise any sort of use of what's called the mockle arrangement, which is the short-term borrowing arrangement, to be a minimum. So, it, yeah, they're working hand in glove with PMO and finance to get that right, just to minimise that cost. So, yeah, it's a lot of work going really early. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sampson. Just a question. Within our summary of investments, well, it's not really an investment balance, we always used to have um, what we had in reserves. For example, um, the reserve contribution, property sales, and that seems to have fallen off, or is it in here somewhere else? That used to be a breakdown of what the reserve balances were. Yeah, Lynn Chair, that's one of those discussions um, you may recall the last council had, and it was, it was one of those areas where some of those balances had they, there was a question about whether they were actually um, there to record a transaction, and the first was a good one, but they didn't really reflect cash being held. There was certainly what like one you're referring to was talking about being a cash balance. So there are some that when we get to what's called the special fund reconciliation, which is where that reserve sits, where we would do that at June once a year, and then we recognise what the cash held is. So that that report was probably one of those where it was useful as a narrative but it didn't reflect the financial instruments and i, and I think from memory also council sense and is it, it never changed it only ever changed yeah. at the end of the financial year once once it was all balanced up so it was it became a bit of a it was a little bit incorrect if you were going to go directly to it from a month by month. So adding to that, I did actually ask, and it was around the time of annual plan last year, for a paper on um, the reserves contribution as to what the balance was, how much goes in each year, and what's taken out, um, you know, so we can actually see the movements or uh, moves as to additional money going in and what comes out uh, for annual balance time, but we could have that sometime, that was going to be probably about October last year. <laughs> You'll do up a reconciliation leading into the annual plan. Yeah, you, I'm yes. happy to make that, because it is an important source of funding for yeah, some. So yeah. we can report reasonably, well, very easily on the June 22, well, in and out. So why don't we provide that with you? You probably couldn't have that. I'll well, check the annual report extensively, but we can provide that. And then that would be like a September disclosure normally about what's going on now. But let's do the June 22 one because that helps us with annual plan discussions. And then we'll have There's more to do with when we're doing annual plan um, consideration as to what could come out of the reserves contribution because it can only come out at annual plan time. And there, sorry, no, there is some allowance in 23 24 for that type of funding anyway. So, I mean, the big thing at the end of the day, if you get it, if you do get, um, there's two things I would be saying you, you need to think more about the long term plan use of those funds so you get more clarity because those capital funds, you don't want to whittle those away. You want to make sure they're on good programs that go forward. So, some of them look at our long term plan for 24 34. But secondly, I understand, uh, well, hopefully I understand well that it's an important source of funding for current things. So we'll, we'll, we have some flexibility to be able to do that. But let's do this June report, because that will link into the decisions for 23, 24, and you can not It was a more to have a report so we understood what came in and out 
for exact leave to put this on. We don't want to We can provide that. Okay. And actually, and hearing you a bit more clearer now, I'll look at to say March 23 and try and forecast, get that information, what we've collected so far. Yeah, I think so that's what you're asking today. for, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have that as an action point. And when do you think? Oh, we can do that next in month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll get one of the staff on, but that's not too okay. hard to do. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, any other discussion? No, I'll put the motion that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the Investments and Borrowings Report to the 31st of March for information. Councillor Reedy, thank you. Seconded. Deputy Mayor Basher, all in favour? Aye. Any against? Carried unanimously, thank you. Now we're going to move on to agenda item number 11. Let me find it, which is page 71. Now, just leading into this, I have had some discussions today just with um, Douglas and Rachel with regard to um, whether the uh, RAC committee had the, um, under their terms of reference, had the authority to, to put the motion as it currently is. We've looked through the terms of reference and I just want to, because it was whether or not this committee makes a recommendation to full council around the leasehold or whether this committee has the delegated authority to make the recommendation directly. So I've read through the terms of reference again, we've had a discussion and I'm still a little bit, do we, don't we? So I'm, I'm going to take a bit of advice from councillors how they feel about it because I'd, I'd rather we do it absolutely correctly and if that means this committee discusses it and then we make a recommendation to full council, which is yourselves, but you'd, you'd um, either accept that recommendation to full council or whether you feel that this committee has the, um, to, in the terms of reference to accept it. So we are responsible in RAC for um, policy around leasehold properties. So whether that's enough, uh, maybe Rachel, you might want to just add to that discussion to give councillors some assurance one way or the other about whether or not we make a recommendation or we accept the recommendation in this committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. The delegations and two reference for RAC uh, do know that we have the ability to develop and monitor policy related to certain matters, which includes financial management, new regeneration, permanent temporary and appointment and remuneration of directors and CCOs. Further goes on to state in the policies RAC has oversight of the free bond of this called main policy. So I would interpret that that's main that RAC does have the ability to develop and monitor that policy, which would also include reviewing or amending that policy. But similarly, if you would prefer to recommend that that option as well. So deputy mayor fashion. It seems to me that it's ten there's almost yeah, there's only one councillor missing. Um, from, from here, that would be a full council meeting. It's unlikely any decision made here is going to be changed to the council meeting. Um, the only reason I can think that you maybe you wouldn't want to have it now is because um, count a full council meeting is seen as a, a, a full meeting where, where more public would probably be interested in and, and it might be a visible decision. That's the only reason I can think of it. Yeah, it's a really good there's a big difference between a committee as a whole, what we are here, and a full council meeting. Now, that's, that's under the LGMC. Sorry, Madam Chair, I should have been talking okay. to you. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, I understand what um, Rachel was saying, in terms of the, the uh, when, as a committee, even as a committee as a whole, we don't have the authority to, if you like, uh, approve expenditure, which is not in the annual plan. And the annual plan does not include anything to do with uh, uh, the discount or continuation of the discount, which is that because already existing in the annual plan. Now we're looking at, uh, uh, so we're introducing that. So I would have thought we'd have to uh, uh, recommend to the full council that we continue the 20%. That way we're at jail both times. I was thinking of the similar things, Councillor Reedy, and that's why I brought it up, because I think that we just want to be sure that we get our processes right. So 
the way I'm intending on doing that is that I think we will have the discussion here. I'm happy with that. And then we make a recommendation through the full council. Um, I can put the, the motion there. You can have a think about it as we go through. Some might think that we've, we've covered. I, I'd probably err on the side of caution and put a recommendation through the full council myself. Um, but anyway, but that was a bit of a lead-in, which is a bit of a read here for the actual um, paper we have in front of us. So let's discuss the paper and then we'll work out how we're going to deal with the resolution afterwards. Councillor Nagel, um, yes. we'll come to you, Councillor Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, just reverting back to what we were discussing, I mean, there is another option that could certainly further this whole day for the council. Could do that. And, um, and I think that's the proper place for it. I think, you know, when, we, when this committee was finding this list in order, maybe the whole time discussed here, but otherwise, I think it's a full council matter. I'm comfortable that way as well. Doug, would you have written this paper? Are you, are you all? Madam Chair, we probably just say. Overlook that key point. Could we put this to this committee? So I'm very happy that it goes to council. Um, I just think it's a obviously it's clear in one of my viewers. So yeah, let's put it okay. to the next council meeting. Okay. And Mr. Mayor, that will be your meeting, so you're comfortable with that. You'd welcome it. Okay, so we'll defer that. We move that we defer this to full council, second of council. Howard, all in favour of deferral? Right. Carried. Any against? Oh, okay. Well, that chop one off. Have said that, not yet. Okay, so we're going to move on to um, projects and partnership. Monthly report page 76, again, right in 12. Uh, so these are reports mainly up to the end of March. Um, what have, all, have already gone through the pay, projects and partnership reporting. Just because of the timing now, we haven't got this time, the minutes from that meeting, because I believe, Mr. Mayor, you had that on Monday. Yeah, yeah so. Um, there's a, yeah, we haven't quite got the, the minutes of the meeting that's just gone, but I think that once again, these the way in which these are reported make it very clear. I think that everyone's got used to how they look very visual. Um, it's also, I just want to know that it's, um, it's great to see that the um, port prep package is um, that's closed off now. So that was a $3.3 million project. Um, came in, uh, the scope was achieved then within budget, so um, that's a great acknowledgement to all those that were involved in that particular project. Um, so you would have all had a chance to read through these. Um, I'm probably not planning on going through them individually, so Mr Mayor. Just to reflect on the poor project that you refer, um, the, that was the site of the Prime Minister's visit on Friday, um, where we took the opportunity to provide him a tour of the Crown expenditure into the floating basin, as we call it, the floating pontoons, fishing fishing um, fleet facilities, and the 3.3 million project you're talking about there, which was the other safety and services upgrades to the wharves. Um, the Prime Minister was very impressed with the leverage that that relatively small investment from the Crown has um, enabled, being um, Tally's impending investment into their facilities and obviously Western Mineral Sands uh, investment into their, um, their planned shipping um, work. Um, and the feedback that the port is becoming a port of choice for more vessels for fishing um, with the ability for them now to have a shower and you know cook some baked beans or whatever at the um at the ablution block so um a really successful day and we've got to, <coughs> worth taking that opportunity for um to provide that um closure i think that the crown could actually see um some of their funding in action and um and delivering intended um, multiplication of private the private uh, investment into that area as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. And it's a very visual project, so it's something that the whole community can see as well. So the $3.3 million project specifically um, has taken the port from an area where anyone could pretty much drive up onto the wharf by the Harbour Master's office, and have a wander around or wander around any of the fishing boats or climb up and down the ladders to a, um, to a port that is, um, according to the to the experts that were there, uh, you know, as an hour, a um, you know, a true commercial port, it's properly secure, um, and there's you know proper um, 
um, electrical connections for boats and water and all of that is metered um, before. So there was a lot of, um, uh, you know, inability to claim back the costs of some of that to, you know, to the users. So now there's, you know, there's metered water, metered power for all the different berths, um, that kind of thing. A lot of work gone into is in behind the scenes, the unseen stuff around untangling the, the, the complicated leaseholds and land tenures and lost documents and what have you that plagued that whole area. So a lot of that has been un, unraveled and tidied up and, um, you know, really has been a, a good investment in getting the port in a position to be um, hopefully buzzing again. And I think it's probably a good opportunity to acknowledge in this case um, project manager Phil Rossiter um, for his management of that particular project. Um, and I think he had an opportunity to talk to the Prime Minister as well, didn't he, on the day? So actually, the, the, another good point too is that that, that project was, was done by way, as most of these are, by way of um, um, uh, drawdown, or whatever, you know, approved receipts and, and then approved for funding by the by the um, IRG or Kanoa. Um, and so that project ended up completing all of its targeted um, outcomes for about 100,000 less than what was in the budget, 103,000. So again, um, sort of a really good goodwill, good um, good faith gesture with the Crown that we deliver what we said we were going to do and we deliver, um, although a bit late because of the complex complexities of the project, um, you know, a little bit under budget. So that's a, a good, um, honest way to do business. Absolutely. Okay, um, I'll now open it to any discussion on any of the other um, papers in this project and partnership. Councillor Nadon. Thank you. Um, the can Crown stop there. Um, see there's some minor retraining there, but we had heard earlier that there was sort of a watch and see about what would happen there, but I see, and I guess as far as um, Mayor Klein's pointed out, it was a 50k surplus. So what happens to those surplus from those projects? Do they able to be portions? Or? So, so my understanding is um, that they can be, um, that they're being held at the moment because there's potential for um, some change to the costs for the port rebuild. Yeah. So that, that bit is that bit's quite complex engineering wise. So there's there's some pluses and minuses potentially there. So some of that work, some of that funding may need to be apportioned to that, but that'll be done through the, you know, through the transparent reporting process. Um, but the team might have something more accurate to add to that. Rachel. The Mayor's summed it up uh, very nicely. Within the tranche to the funded program, there is an ability to move overseas and overseas around to deliver the entire tranche to the program. It's not the ability to say take the 50k from that particular the region project and apply it to a council or other community to the region. I guess what I was more um, aiming at was that um, there was talk of possibility of some rock work having to go on because the river training is something pushing, you know, pushed up. So if, if, if it proves uh, over time that rock is completed, does that put the experience in state of the No, so it's only available for delivering of the trans to the project. So if that be part of one of those projects that could be applied to them for all of these something additional, something that we're going to be done, then no, we couldn't apply to them. Thank you. That's a lady. Thank you. Talk about page 103. 103. The campground stop bank. Yep. I'm on page 81. 81, must be another project there. It's the one he's referring to. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the one he's referring to. Okay, so I'm looking at page 103, the uh, Refton Campground Stop Bank, 150,000. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's NEMA and BBC, uh, 150,000, uh, 12,000 is uh, project management, uh, brings it down to 138,000, and then we've got a contingency of about seven. So, Looking at about 130,000, so I was wondering what's the bottom uh, bottom level where a project manager should buy? I mean, uh, you understand a million dollars or two million dollars, but about 100,000 dollars, why do we require a project manager? And 12,000 dollars, which would be spent on something else? I think I know the answer, but I'll put it to Mike. 
Um, but recently, all of our projects have probably been in the for a human process. We have to make sure whatever we do is continued out um, respectfully and that we get it right. We also have to monitor each of the projects to make sure that what the deliverables are that have been delivered and that then we can close those projects and send them to the project manager. And we have to do all of our projects, regardless of whether it's a $5,000 project. And the cost there, so a $5,000 project may cost us $120 a project manager time, but the reality is still there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Excuse me, Ken. I'll just go back to the motion. Okay. Um, so, Councillor Reedy, you're moving that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the projects and partnership update report for information. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Webb. All in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously. <laughs> And now we'll move on to agenda item 13, which is moving into public excluded. Find the page. Okay, so now we're, uh, this is for page 125, agenda item 13, and this is um, moving to public excluded. We have um, two items. Uh, one is projects and partnership update report on the IAF funded project and then the um, public excluded portion of the minutes from last month's meeting. Um, so the recommendation is that the Risk and Audit Committee resolve that public be excluded from the following parts of the meeting, as I've mentioned, but it's over mover. Councillor Nalon, seconded Deputy Mayor Basher. All in favour? Aye. Any against? Are you, are you? Sorry, I missed your. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I'm, I was in favour of. Uh, uh, I think I was saying I'm in favour. You're in favour? Great, thank you. So, all in favour, that's everyone, I think. Any against? No, 